Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, Adam, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat. Apple, pear, orange, banana. But, of the tree the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Chapter 3, verse 6. When the woman, the wife, Eve, saw the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye, a tree to be desired to make one wise, the good and evil. She took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. God told Adam, don't eat it. What would happen if he ate it? Chapter 5. This is the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them. Boy, you got to stress that today. Blessed them and called their name Adam, Mr. and Mrs. Adam. In the day when he created them, Adam lived to 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he begat Seth were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. All the days of Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. Verse 6. He did eat, and she he did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Eve took the tree that said death. Adam took one look at Eve and whatever it was. He took a look at Eve and said, Woman, you're not right. Now he was there. I mean, the moment she ate that fruit, she changed. I guarantee it. I guarantee the poison of that fruit began instantly. Though they didn't die that afternoon, they died. And Adam did eat. Adam looked at his wife. First Timothy. Two, fourteen. Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Adam knew full well what he did. He took one look at his wife and said, you're dead. You're a dead woman. She gave him the fruit, and she and he ate it, and Adam and Eve would die. Not that day. She was deceived, but not Adam. Romans 5. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die. Yet preventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. Adam. 
Aaron, Adam, Aaron, Adam gave his life for his wife. He knew she was dead, going to die. She gave him that fruit, and he ate. But God commanded his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While he was a sinner, Adam took of the fruit and ate. Because he loves his wife. God could have made another one. He made Eve. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be funny. Okay? No joke. Adam had plenty of ribs. Adam had plenty of bones. But Adam took one look at Eve and said, Fourteen. Fourteen nine. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived the gospel, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. Now for the gospel, first Corinthians fifteen. For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also receive, how that Christ died for our sin, according to the scripture. Adam died to be a sinner for his wife. He was buried. I assume they buried Adam and Eve. And he rose again, they'll rise, the third day according to scripture. So Adam died for his wife. Eve. Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Revelation. Eighteen. Twenty-three. Light of the candle shall shine no more in the New Jerusalem. The voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall no heard no more in the. I got the wrong word. That's not the right verse I want. I apologize. Twenty one. Uh, 21.9 And there came unto me one with the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying come hither I will show thee the bride the lamb's wife The church is the bride of Jesus Christ the lamb the lamb of God which take away the sin of the world Our husband, our bridegroom, Jesus, died for us. As Adam died for his wife. Adam is called the first Adam. Jesus is called the second Adam. See where we are? Ephesians. Twenty-two. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. You know, if Eve would have done that, but 
For the husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ, our bridegroom, is the head of the church. Christ the bridegroom, Christ the husband, is the head of the family, the church. We are subject, we are to submit to Christ, our bridegroom, being the bride. He is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives. That's a commandment. Even as Christ also loved the church, Adam loved Eve, his bride. Christ loved the church, his bride. You are to love your wife, the bride, and gave himself for it. You are to love your wife enough to lay, her, lay your life down for her. If it came between you and her for life, she lives, you die. As Adam, as Christ. We are in a day and age today. It used to be when I grew up as a child, you would think that the bank was the, was the unsafe place. You never knew if somebody was going to come in with guns and rob a bank. Today it's anywhere or another place with a package store. When I grew up as a child. Today it could be anywhere. The movie theater, the school room, the concert, the grocery store, the gas station. The, the fast food restaurant, anywhere and everywhere. If your life is, if your wife's life is in danger, I'm trying to say that three times, and at risk, it is your duty as your husband lay your life down for her. And history. There's been many stories of Christians in the church age where a husband has laid his life down. Where the husband's gone to whatever they're going to do to kill him. And the wife has been there by his side with him. And I'm not just speaking as, oh, he's just preaching. I've been widowed twice. I'm looking for another wife. My second wife, Tracy, was in the hospital. I was with her. And I didn't know anything with her ailments. Everything was new, like with Lisa with her ailments. And the doctor came in the room and told us that her kidneys were horrible. I don't I don't remember that's the word he used. But. She was in the hospital bed. The doctor was standing there and I was standing there. My first reaction caused a tender love of my wife and an awe of the doctor. At that moment, the news that he gave, and I forget the word, I turned to the doctor and I said, well, if need be, I'll give my kidney, I'll give my life, my kidney for my wife to live. Would that help? I didn't think about it. I didn't discuss. I didn't know. I don't know how bad it was. I didn't know if it was death or not. Just my reaction for my wife was, I'll give her mine and if I have to die. So be it. I've been there. I didn't even think about it. I'm telling you, you know, my wife afterwards, she's 
she was pleased. There was nothing more for her to know that my husband loved me. At her dying day, her her one of her words were before she died was Styly help me. She had lung cancer. That's what killed her, the lung cancer. If I could, I'd give her my lungs. Well, my lungs are bad. I guess COPD and emphysema, but if I could have, I would have. But there was nothing I could do at that moment. I hear these guys, you know, they talk about their guns and prison. We'll go, you know, but my question is, if you got a wife, okay, you can have your gun, shoot, shoot, bang, bang. But what if they shoot back? And your wife is in danger of a bullet. What if you are somewhere in the world today, I don't know where, I don't, church or anywhere. And just too quick to react, too quick to pull out your uh, uh, bullets or somebody with a sword, whatever they have. It is your scripture duty as your as being a husband, as Christ and as Adam, to lay your life down for your wife to live. I mean, a, a wife in some of those love novels she's got, or they got, one of the things is she would love to have a man right into the storm, right into the things of life, and rescue her. Be her knight in shiny armor that he will die for her. Are you that type of husband? I just gave you the scripture. You are supposed to. Be. 